Oh, come on and give God praise all over the house. Come on, let it flow. Come on, let it flow. Let the praise flow. Come on, let your worship flow. Come on, bless him with the fruit of your lips. Come on, everybody ought to give God some praise on today. How many people know he's worthy? Come on, let it flow. Let it, let it flow. Come on, if God's been good to you, come on, open up your mouth. I said, open up your mouth. Come on, clap those holy hands. Come on, give him some worship on this morning. Come on, church, give him some glory on today. Come on and lift him up. He's worthy of the highest praise. How many people know he's worthy of the highest praise? Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah all over this house. He's worthy from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Our God is worthy to be praised. Come on and lift him up. Come on. He said, if I be lifted up, he said, I'll draw all men unto me. Come on and lift him up, saints of God. Come on. If you're glad to be alive, come on. Give him some worship on today. He's worthy. I said, he's worthy of all the glory, of all the honor. He's worthy to be praised in the city of our God. We bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Father God, we come on this morning. We've come to let our worship flow unto you. For you are the most high God. You are worthy of all of our worship. You're worthy of all of our praise. That's why we don't mind opening our mouths. You said, out of the mouths of babes, you have ordained praise. So we won't let the rocks cry out for us. We know, God, that you're worthy. We know that you're worthy of the glory, the honor, and the praise. You have been good to us. You've been faithful unto us. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. Thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you for the spirit that is in this place even now. Now, God, we look to you for a word from on high. So anoint this, your servant, afresh. Yeah, let your spirit flow through me that I might be a blessing unto your people. Open up our ears, yes, so that we can receive the seed that you have for us on this morning. We live in expectation, God, because we know that you have a harvest already set aside. So bless us as we go forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. Come on, put those hands together all over the house. Hallelujah. I want you to turn back with us. Amen to 2 Kings chapter 4. Amen. Last week. Amen. We came from the same text talking about taking care of business. And so this Sunday we want to continue that same scripture, 2 Kings chapter 4. Amen. Starting at verse number 1. Amen. Reading from the New King James Version. Therein we find these words. A certain woman of the wives, the sons of the prophets, cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. The creditor is coming 
to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. And then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt and you and your sons live on the rest. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. This woman, amen, has some trouble. Creditor is coming to take away her sons due to the debt that she owes. And so she goes to the prophet Elisha, tells him, about the problem and he gives her some instruction on how to handle the debt. This morning, I want to talk, amen, with this title in mind, Overcoming Your Problem. How many people got problems on today? <laughs> Overcoming your problem. L last week, we talked about how this woman, this mother, took care of business. She was in debt, if you will. Creditor was coming in order to take her sons as slaves due to the debt that was owed. And so she went to the prophet Elisha, expressed to Elisha the issue, the matter at hand. And we talked about how Elisha told this woman to go throughout the neighborhood, amen, carrying with her instructions about getting some empty vessels. Yeah, from all of her neighbors. He said, don't just gather a few, but I want you to gather as many as you can. We, we talked about the fact that you should live a life without limits. How, how Elisha instructed this this woman not to just gather a few but but to go throughout the neighborhood to all of her neighbors ga gathering these empty vessels yeah in order to take care of the debt amen that was old and so she goes throughout the neighborhood we talked about amen the optics of that and how Amen. Her neighbors were probably looking out the window as she went along throughout the neighborhood, wondering what was wrong with her, what had gotten into her. I, I would imagine, a amen, if she was coming through our neighborhood, amen, we would be peeking out the window as she went along. Oh, here she come as she comes to the neighborhood, throughout, amen, the neighborhood, every door in order to gather these empty vessels, amen. She's living a life with, 
without limits. I, I love that because sometimes, y'all, we can put limits on our lives. Yeah, yeah, society oftentimes place limits on us. But the prophet tells this woman, don't just gather a few empty vessels, but get as many as possible. A amen. We talked about the fact that that what you gain is tied to what you obtain. Yeah, yeah, she was able to gather all of these empty vessels. When she got back home, she poured, amen, the oil into the vessels, amen, to the point where there were no vessels left. She went to the prophet, told the prophet about it. He said, I want you to take what you have, amen, pay off the debt, amen, and then you and your sons can live off the rest. Oh, y'all missed it. That, that if she only gathered a few vessels, a amen, that's all she would have, and maybe she wouldn't have enough to pay off the debt that she owed, but since she went throughout the neighborhood to all of her neighbors gathering as many empty vessels as possible. Watch this. Not only was she at, uh, able to gain enough to pay off the debt, but she was also able to gain enough where her and her sons could live off the rest. Y'all, y'all missing it. Uh, don't, don't just gather a few vessels, but get as many as possible. Watch this. Because God can do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. I, I love the text because this woman has a problem. And, and, and she gets instructions from the prophet Elisha to go throughout the neighborhood. Amen. Get as many empty vessels as possible from all of your neighbors. Come back home. Amen. Bring out your oil. And I want you to pour the oil into all of the vessels. And when the vessel gets full, I want you to set it aside. A amen. That's what she did, amen, she went throughout the neighborhood, gathered as many empty vessels as possible. She returned back home, amen, got her oil, uh, and she started to pour the oil. Uh, she started to let it flow, yeah, yeah. She started to let it flow throughout all the vessels uh, that were in the house. I, I love it because the woman teaches us uh, that in order to overcome your problem, you have to do what's within your power. Y'all missed it. I hope you jotted that down. The woman teaches us that in order to overcome your problem, you have to do what's within your power. She left her house. She went throughout the neighborhood. She gathered as many empty vessels as possible. She returned to the house. She took out her oil and she filled up the vessels that she had collected. And she was able, y'all, to pay off the debt and to live off the rest of the oil that was still left over. So in order to overcome her problem, she did what was in her power. She said, I can go around the neighborhood and collect the empty vessels. And after I collect the empty vessels, I can come back to the house, take out my oil, and pour the oil into all of the vessels. Yeah, church, you've got to do what's within your power. Power, 
in order to overcome your problems. Oh, you can give God praise. Don't you know that praise is a weapon of warfare? Oh, you can open up your mouth and give God some worship. Don't you know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, oh, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Do I have anybody in here that can say, Pastor, I can pray. Oh, I can lift up a word to the Lord. Do I have anybody here? You had some problems, but you got on your knees and you had a little talk with Jesus. Told him about all your problems. Didn't he hear your faintest cry? Do I have somebody in here that can say, Pastor, I can clap my hands. I can give God some glory. I can give God some worship. In order to overcome your problem, you got to do what's within your power. Look at somebody and tell them, you can praise God. Yeah, you can give God some glory. That's how you get through the valley. That's how you make it through a storm. I love it. She says, I can do that. That's within my power. You, you want to overcome your problem? Watch this. You got to forgive them. Oh, I knew it was going to be quiet. Y'all ain't want to hear that one. Y'all just want to hear the praise and the prayer and the worship. But sometimes you got to forgive people. Oh, you want that relationship to get back together? You got to stop holding grudges. It's within your power. You got to love them. That's within your power. Oh, my God. You got to stop holding grudges. That's within your power. You got to get rid of that stank attitude. That's within your power. She, she said, I need you to go throughout the neighborhood. Gather as many empty vessels as possible. Bring it back to the house. Uh, when you get back to the house, I need you to shut the door. Yeah, on, on you and your sons and, and pour out the oil into all of the vessels. The, the woman said, I can do that. And, and so she, she gets back to the house. She pours out the oil, y'all. And, 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 and this really got me, y'all. She, she's pouring out the oil. And she gets to the point where she says, bring me another vessel. And the son says, we're out. We, we ain't got no more. Oh. Uh, so she goes to the prophet Elisha, and, and she tells him uh, what, what has transpired. He says to, to the woman, go and pay off your debt with that. And then you and your sons can live off the rest. Church, church here's the thing that got me. Because this, this woman was concerned that her sons would be taken away from her. She had a debt. And so she didn't think she had enough in order to take care of the debt. Elisha told her what to do in order to deal with her problem. I, I love it. Remember, I told you that the husband had died. R remember how last week I told you how 
her sons serve as providers. Yeah, in this particular society, the, the, the men, amen, they serve as providers. Not only did they serve as providers, they served as protectors. L look at it. The, 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 the man is no longer around. This woman has death. And she's concerned about her sons being taken as slaves by this creditor. Oh, my God. I, I love it. Look, look at it. They are supposed to be protecting her. The husband is no longer around, watch this, to teach them how to be protector. But look at this woman. In order, amen, to pay off the debt so that her sons aren't taken as slaves, she goes throughout the neighborhood gathers as many empty vessels as possible, comes back to the house, pours the oil into the vessels, gets enough where she's able to pay off the debts. Watch this. In order to maintain possession of her sons. Oh, my God. Uh, the, the husband is no longer around to teach the sons how to be a protector Ah, but this woman, amen, in the text goes throughout the neighborhood gathering all the vessels that she could possibly gather, comes back to the house, amen, pours the oil into the vessels uh, to the point where she has enough uh, to pay off the debt uh, so that she can keep her sons, uh, so that she serves as an example uh, for her connection. That's how you overcome your problem. This woman said, since my husband is no longer around to show them how to be a protector, let me step up to the plate, do what I have to do in order to keep them. Let me show them the lips that they may have to go to in order to protect the people that God has assigned to them. Oh, how many people know you've had to go through some extremes in order to make sure I'm talking to some parents right now. Any parents here knows that you are willing to do whatever it takes to maintain the the blessings that God has given unto you. She serves as an example. And that's all I'm trying to say, church. Sometimes we go through stuff, but we got to understand that maybe God has put us in position to serve as an example to people around us so that when they go through something they can look back at oh my God and say this is how you walk on water this is how you deal with your enemies sometimes you got to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle this is how you overcome depression this is how you get out of debt this is how you walk by faith and not by sight. Is there anybody in here who can say, Pastor, I serve as a testimony of what God can do. I serve as proof of what the Lord can do. And if God did it for me, he can do it. Do I have anybody in here that God worked it out for you and you can testify on today that if you just hold on, the Lord will make a way. Anybody know 
he's Jehovah Jireh. Anybody know he'll heal your body? Anybody know he'll supply your need? You serve as his example for people. You got to show people around you that this is how oh, you overcome your problem. Oh, no, you don't whine and complain. <laughs> but no, you give God the praise. <laughs> you let the enemy know <laughs> that you won't allow your condition <laughs> to determine your conduct. <laughs> you let the enemy know, <laughs> I will bless the Lord <laughs> at all times <laughs> and his praise. said, I'm serving as an example. No, I won't live in fear because God has not given us the spirit of fear. Oh, no, I'm not going to live uh, my life depressed uh, because weeping may uh, endure for a night, uh, but so said, I got to show them oh, how to serve as protectors. Oh, guess what? You got eyes watching you. And you need to understand that one of the reasons God gave you the problem is so that those eyes that are watching you can see how you deal with your issue. go around the neighborhood and, and collect all the empty vessels that, that I can in, in order to overcome your problem you, you got to serve as an example to your connection then you got to do what's within your power Here, here's the last thing um Know that what seems useless can become useful. <sighs> Elisha said, I need you to go around the neighborhood. Yeah, collect as many empty vessels as possible. <sighs> and I need you. Bring them back to the house. Uh, and, and so the, the question is, um, I can imagine for, for this woman, what in the world I'm going to do with some empty vessels? Man, I, I don't need no empty vessels. I need some money. <laughs> the creditor is coming. I'm talking to somebody out there. Because sometimes it seems like God don't make no sense. Why, why God, am I going to go around the neighborhood and, and, and collect some empty vessels? Yeah, they, they, they're empty. They, they ain't got nothing in them. I'm, I'm in debt. Oh, my God. So, sometimes God will have you to do stuff that don't make no sense. She, she goes around, amen, collects as many empty vessels as, as possible. Um, she comes back to the house, shuts the door on her and, and her sons, and she starts pouring oil into all of the vessels. Huh. Yeah, he says, when they're full... 
put 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 it to the side. Look 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 at this. Um, um, you 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 need empty vessels Be, because when you are full of yourself, God can't fill you. Say it again, Pastor. Can I say that again? When, when you got the big head, when, when you arrogant and conceited, when you all up into your degrees, and the three letters behind your name, when you're full of yourself, God said, I can't feel you. Oh, that's why you got to come before him empty. Oh, so that, so that the Lord can fill you. Oh, fill me up. Yeah, till I overflow. I, I want to run. Oh, I can't run over if I think I'm all that. I, I, I got to humble myself under the mighty hand of God and in due season he'll fill me up. You, you want to know why you haven't been elevated? Maybe you're too full of yourself. You, you want to know why you haven't been promoted? God said I can't fill you up because you're too full of yourself. He said, if I, if I elevated you, you, you'll think it was you that did it. I ain't going to do it until you humble yourself. And then I'll promote you because I know I'll get the glory. Uh, why, 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 Elisha, do I need to go throughout the neighborhood? To all my neighbors to get some empty vessels. <coughs> but she did it. And those empty vessels uh, help her to pay off her debt. Y'all, y'all missing me. Th those empty vessels, yeah, help her to maintain her possession. Of her house. Y'all missing it because the creditor is coming. And if I ain't got what I need to pay off the debt, guess what? I'm going to lose my house. And not only will I lose my house, I'm going to lose my sons. And so what seemed useless became useful. That's why you got to value everything the Lord has given unto you. Because you never know when you can need. Oh, my God. Do I have anybody in here? Look, I, I was reading a story. And, and, and the story related... Uh, to a flood, and and with all with, with all this bad weather, climate change that's happening, um, flood came in, in a certain area, and and this man, Amen. He was in his SUV. Uh, uh, he got submerged into this creek. Oh. He, he was about to drown. Yeah. He, he was submerged. Amen. Uh, underwater. And, and, and it was making its way, the flood, up to his window. Oh, my God. But, but, but another man saw him. Watch this. And, and in the back of his pickup truck, he had a rope. 
Oh, y'all missing it. He, he just so happened to have a rope, amen, sitting in the back of his pickup truck. He got the rope out, threw it to the man who had gotten out of his vehicle by that time. The man put the rope, tied it around his waist area under his arms, y'all. And the man was able to pull the brother ashore, watch this, with the rope that was in the back of a pickup truck. Oh, that rope that had been riding in the truck for days, it seemed useless, y'all. But God used the rope in order to come to that brother's rescue. Somebody ought to shout on today. Because has God ever thrown you a rope? Oh, is there anybody in here? You were sinking deep in sin, but God threw you a rope. Do I have some company up in here? You were about to drown, but God came to your rescue. You ought to be glad you're still here. After all the stuff you've been through, can somebody give God praise for coming to your rescue? When you were in danger, about to go under, the Lord threw you a rope and came. Okay, I'll let y'all go. But when we look at the cross, <laughs> this piece of wood seemed like just a piece of wood. That's all it is. But it's on that wood that he shed his blood. Oh, y'all missing it. It's on that wood that he died for our sins. Y'all, it's on the wood where he set us free and whom the Son sets free is free indeed. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burn of my heart rolled away. How many people know it was there by faith that you received your sight. You ought to high five somebody and tell them and now tell them now I am happy all oh, the what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. Somebody ought to give God praise for the cross on a hill called Calvary. Somebody ought to give God glory for an old rugged cross that washed What seemed useless became useful. Can I talk to you real quick? What you're going through right now, you think is pointless. <laughs> God, why am I going through this? God, why you, why you still got me here? Why, why you haven't delivered? Why I got to deal with this mess? You think it's pointless. You think you're going through it in vain. <laughs> but what seems to you to be useless will become useful. As a matter of fact, what you're dealing with now, guess what? It's making you stronger. And you don't even know it. What, what, what you're going through right now, God is using it to shape and mold you. To prepare you for what he has in store.
tore for you. How, how many people can look back on your life at those times when you thought what you were going through was in vain? It was pointless. It ain't make no sense. But now you can give God praise for those times. Because those times made you better. Oh, yeah. It, it drew you closer to the Lord. It taught you how to handle, amen, certain situations. Now you can look back and say, thank you, God, for those empty vessels. <laughs> Th thank you, God, for that nasty co-worker. Oh, do I have a witness up in here? Th thank you, God, for those times where I came under attack. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand why you left me there for all that time. But the Lord says, it may seem useless to you right now, but it will be useful. Yeah. Yeah. God said, I will get the glory and the honor and the praise out of it. Somebody may be here on this morning, and guess what? You're unsaved. We, we just told you that, that God used some wood, <laughs> something that seemed useless. He, he used some wood, an old rugged cross, yeah, in order for us to have salvation, in order for us to have a right relationship with God. And if you're here on this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Savior. Amen. You ought to make this the day. Amen. Where the cross becomes useful unto you. Where the shedding of blood, yeah, becomes useful in, in your life. That, 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 that washes away the sin, the shedding of blood washes away the sin. And so if you're here on this morning unsaved, would you stand? Would you come this way? Salvation is free. It can be yours on this morning if you're here. If you're willing to come, yeah, you can walk this way. Or maybe you're here, you're looking for a church home. If that's you on this morning, looking for a church home, God bless you, mother. God bless you. Hallelujah. If you're watching online, if you're watching online, unsaved, looking for a church home, you can reach out to us. You can go to the inbox. Give us your name. Give us your number. Amen. And we'll reach out to you real soon. Amen. Jesus is what you need in order for you to overcome your problem. Yeah, he'll help you to overcome your situation if you got him in your life. You need him in your life if you don't. So if you're here, deacons are walking the aisle right now. You can stand. You can come this way, unsaved or looking for a church home. Make your way down front on this morning. Is there another? Is there another unsaved looking for a church home? Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Yeah, don't give up. Don't give up on God, for he won't give up on you. He's able. Yeah, how many people know he's able? Yeah. Come on, sing that for us again. God is able to do just what? Just what he said he would do. You can still come on this morning. You can still come.
yes, he is. He's gonna. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Come on, y'all do that. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. together if you know he's able hallelujah we praise God for the one who has come on today amen as we come we want to be in prayer for those who stand in need of prayer amen Minister Wilkins is coming at this time to give us our intercessory prayer amen want to be in prayer for trustee Meadows amen on this morning in addition to those names that are listed in our bulletin come on let us go to the Lord in prayer let us pray Heavenly Father come to you as humbly as possible Lord God Father first thing thank you Father, we thank you for waking us up on this morning because you didn't have to. Some did not wake up, Lord, but we say thank you. Because we were able to come into the house one more time to praise and worship you, to give you the glory, to give you the honor. Father, we say thank you. Lord, I thank you, Lord God standing in intercessory prayer, given the honor and the privilege to stand before your people yet once again. Father God, asking that you touch all of us as only you can. Touch our bodies, touch our hearts, touch our souls, Lord God. Father, anoint us from on high. Have your way within us, Lord God. Your will be done. Lord, I come thanking you for continuing to walk with us, to talk with us, to show us the way, Lord God. Father, and as Pastor preached today of being empty, Lord God, I thank you for the emptiness. Lord, I thank you for the trials, the tribulations, the situations, the circumstances, everything, Lord God, that has been placed before us, Lord God. We say thank you. Because we know, Lord, if we had not been through these situations, these trials, Lord God, the emptiness, Lord, that we would not be in a closer relationship with you. Draw us, Lord. Continue to draw us closer to you, Father. Have your way. Lord, I ask that knowing that you're already in the hospitals, that you touch those, Lord God, or feeling, Lord God, that it may not be anything left for them to be thankful for. But show them, Lord God, that you are right there with them. Lord, you said in your word that you would never leave us nor forsake us. 
Father, and you hold true to your word. Lord, you keep your promises, so we say thank you. Lord, we know that you are the true doctor. You are the great physician. So as you touch your physicians, your nurses, your technicians, everybody that's there, Lord God, before any surgical procedures are done, before they put their hands on your children, Lord, I ask that you touch them, touch their mind, Lord God. Bring everything back to the surgeons that they need to remember what they need to do for each specific patient, Lord God. Lord, and I ask that the nurses and the technicians have patience with these people. Lord, because, Lord, they're going through something right now. Have them to understand and to remember the calling on their lives in the hospitals, Lord God. Have them to be the caretakers that you've called them to be. Have them to continue to do everything with a spirit of excellence as you have called them to do. Everything that you've poured into them, let it pour out in a caring and loving way, Lord God. Because that's what you're all about, Lord. You're all about love. So, Father, I say thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for watching over those that have lost loved ones, Father. Mm. Lord, let them know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. That weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Father, I ask that you continue to wrap your loving arms around them, Lord. Give them the peace that surpasses understanding. Because, Father God, in all situations, not just death, but even in our living, we know that you are Jehovah Rapha, our provider, our healer. We know that you're Jehovah Jireh, our provider. But Lord, we also know that you are Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace. So Father, we thank you. Lord, thank you for your loving arms that you have wrapped around all of us, Lord God, in every situation. Lord, we thank you. I just can't say thank you enough, Lord God, for all you've done, all you're doing, and all you're going to do. You continue to carry us, Lord God. Lord, I just say thank you. Lord, I thank you for the pastor on today, Lord God. I ask that you pour back into him, Father, which he has poured out. Lord, bless him and his family, Lord God. Continue to uplift them, Lord God. Father, pour back into him what he has poured out all to us. Lord, I ask that something was said on today that ears were touched, that the question to be asked, what must I do to be saved? Father, we thank you for this word. Father, we thank you for everything because without you, we're nothing. Father, we realize that we may get weak sometimes, but we know that, Father, you're our strength. So whatever comes against us, Lord God, whoever comes against us, Lord God, Whatever the situation, we know that we can come to you because you are a strong tower. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God glory. Give him honor. Don't forget this Wednesday Bible study at 7 o'clock. Amen. Facebook. Amen Live. We want you to join us for a new series that we'll be starting. Amen. 7 o'clock p.m. Invite somebody to come and share with us on this coming Saturday. Amen. Our seniors will be meeting last session before we break for the summer. So seniors, amen. We're looking forward to seeing you on Saturday at 8.30. Breakfast will be served. Amen. Amen. I want to give God praise for our guest musician on the day. Amen. Brother Anthony Freeman. Amen. Yeah.
He's going to be with us for a while, so we want you to be in prayer for him. Amen. There are persons interested in a trip to the African American Museum there in Washington. Amen. Some of us have gone there before, but amen. There are some who are interested, amen, in going there again or for the first time. And so we want to see what kind of numbers we are working with. And so this Sunday and next Sunday, amen, if you are interested in taking that trip to that National African American Museum in D.C., amen, we want you to sign up. Registration table will be out to my right, amen. We want you to sign up after worship today and on next Sunday, amen. We're trying to see what kind of numbers we are working with. I believe they're trying to go in September. In September, we're trying to go to D.C. Are there any visitors with us on today? You're not a member of Providence. Would you stand at this time? Any visitors with us on this morning? Amen. Look like it's all of us. Amen. So we bless God. If you're visiting online, we thank and we bless God for you being with us on this morning. Amen. If you're online, do us a favor and click the share button on your screen. Share the page to your timeline. Amen. So that others can be blessed by what God has done in this place on today. It's giving time. It's giving time. Amen. Amen. You got to pour it out. Amen. You got to let it flow. He says, bring the tithe, bring the offering. Amen. Into the storehouse. He said, if you let it flow, amen, I'll open the window of heaven, pour you out a blessing. You don't have enough room to receive. He said, if you give, I'll give it back to you. Press down, shaken together, running over back in good measure. The Bible declares that if you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, guess what? You will sow, you will reap bountifully. And so we've come, amen, to sow bountifully unto the Lord, amen, hoping, praying for a bountiful blessing. How many people know that God is your provider? That he is Jehovah Jireh. He's your source. So we bless the name of the Lord. I'm so grateful that the Lord just don't bless you with money. Amen. Sometimes you don't need money. Sometimes you need some peace. Sometimes you need some joy. Do I have a witness up in here? Sometimes you need some strength. Yeah. Strength for today and some bright hope for tomorrow yeah and so we've come to give if you don't have cash if you don't have check you can give using your credit or your debit card this morning you can go to givelify.com find providence baptist church amen 1331 30th street newport news virginia amen you can give online this morning amen or you can go to the cash app Go to the cash app, put in the dollar sign, PBC News Live. That information is on your screen, dollar sign, amen, PBC News Live. We want to give, amen, with the joy of the Lord. The Lord said, I want a cheerful giver. <laughs> we ought to be happy. We ought to be excited to give unto after all the Lord has done for us we ought to be excited to give unto him and so our ushers are going to lead us amen deacon is coming to pray ushers are coming amen pew by pew let us hear amen let us bow our heads God we thank you for the opportunity to come again and to give as you've commanded us to do God and we pray that you will bless this offering that it will be used for the upbuilding of thy kingdom on earth in Jesus name amen amen the Lord bless you may the Lord keep you may the Lord make his face shine upon you 
be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. May he bless you in the city. May he bless you in the field. May he bless you going out and you're coming in both now and forevermore. Let the church say amen. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.